Um, today we're going to dive into the instructional strategies within Elevation. I know you guys don't have a ton of time to dig through those, so I dug through them for you, and I found one that I think is a really effective one for your population. And so I'm going to show you that one strategy plus a bunch of other strategies that kind of connect to it that hopefully you can use in your classroom. So we'll practice them together today so that how they work. Of course, our BISD goal is always to improve Tier 1 instruction for ELLs. Um, does everybody have a way to log in? Um, you can get a Chromebook or pull out your laptop. I think it will work on an iPad just fine. So everybody go ahead and log into Elevation. Go to staff and then under staff quick links, you'll see elevation for teachers. If it's your computer, it should log you in. If it's a different computer, you just use your same login that you use for your email. Technology is good. It's very, very good. It didn't come up with log in to active. When it is bad, it's really bad. Note to our workforce. Should I do something? Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
to work together as partners. Turn to your partner and tell your partner everything you remember that was on that slide. What do you remember about the buyout? Sorry. Yep, yeah, but then I go over there. Okay. Okay. And also for question two, um, English is not included in that. We're talking about the top three languages spoken by ELLs is what it should say. Like we've got two kids in the whole district who speak Pashto. 
oh, which is the language that they speak in Pakistan that they yeah. don't even make bilingual dictionaries for. Yeah. So I had one like that today every year. What are the top three languages spoken by students? What do you think the first one is? Spanish. Correct. What do you think the second one is? Vietnamese. Correct. And the third one? French or Arabic? Arabic is correct. Good job. You got it. Good job. Okay, what's the percentage of the population that are ELL? 77. No, they don't. You got to think of the whole district. 71. Think of Smithfield and Birdville High School. Whoa. But that's a large percentage for a district. Really? It is. When we have eighty percent, we're close to that right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the majority of ELLs are from which country? Oh, uh, the sad uh, truth. Yeah, the sad truth is that most ELLs in America are American. The parents. Oh, yeah. 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 Trick so question. Trick, I know, it's a trick well, question, it's but it's Did you write the CD? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this technique is called Can You Guess? And with Can You Guess, you just throw a bunch of blanks up there in some information that you're going to be teaching the kids, and you get them to guess about what the information is that goes in the blanks. You talk it over with the partner or with their group. And then you have them share out what they think it is, and then you show them what it really is. What are the benefits of doing Can You Guess with English learners? They're getting, they're getting the use of prior knowledge that they have. They're, they're tapping into their yep. knowledge. They're connecting to their prior knowledge, aren't they? Okay, what else? What are some other benefits for English learners? Less pressure. There's no pressure in there. And when we can have an activity where there's no pressure and the risk is low, they're more likely to um, participate and be engaged. Okay, what else is good about this? There's really no shame. Pretty much nobody knows. Right. We like, were all pretty far yeah, off yeah. the language. Yeah. Okay. Wrong, so. yeah. Um, how did you feel when you got it wrong? Like, oh, well. Um, oh, well. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. new to me. Yeah. yeah. It was a positive exactly. yeah. experience. Yeah. And, you know, research says that kids remember answers they got wrong better than they remember answers they got right anyway. So it's a win-win. Um, and then kids want to know what the answers are. You know, how many times are kids asking, what's the answer? What, what goes in the blank? And when you play can you guess the answer? They don't forget the concept. They think it's a game. Mm -hmm. like for it's, so it's got an element of fun to it, which goes towards engagement. Makes a great warm-up at the beginning or a building background activity at the beginning of the lesson and then do it again at the end of the lesson and they'll get them all right and feel really good about themselves. So I put that on the board. Oops, black out. Okay, now we're gonna hover over that instruction tab. So go to that ribbon, that blue ribbon. Hover over the instruction tab and you should see this drop down menu. And what I'd like you to click on is Framework Overview. Click on Framework Overview. Their framework doesn't have the same names as the components of PSYOP. So first, let's look at the components of PSYOP on our um, 30 features chart. Have you seen the PSYOP protocol before? PSYOP protocol, some versions of it are like 10 pages long. Um, I don't like that. I don't like a teacher to have to deal with 10 pages of a protocol. So I reduced it to one page. This is the whole PSYOP protocol. And the only component that we're going to be talking about today is comprehensible input. So just take a second to glance over the three features of comprehensible input on your 30 features chart. Everybody look at comprehensible input on your 30 features chart. Why my computer is not? Is it acting up? That's the thing about technology. When it's good, it's really, really good. When it's bad, this is up your lesson. Yes, isn't that nice for a change? I know. 
Okay, so we are going to be talking about comprehensible input today, but Elevation calls it clarify input. So when you see clarify input in Elevation, it really means what? Comprehensible input. Okay, so did everybody click on the framework overview? Once you click on the framework overview, scroll down to practice two. Clarify input. Everybody find it? Practice to clarify input. Do you see it? Yes. Is there anybody who can't get to that page? Okay. So you'll see that this part right here is an overview of clarify input, and these are reflective questions to ask yourself about your practice of using clarify input. So I'd like you to read those two sections the overview and the reflective questions. Nothing else, just those two parts. <coughs> and then after you finish reading those, turn to your partner and in one sentence tell your neighbor the definition of clarify input and which of those questions <coughs> resonated with you? Which one made you go, wow, that really speaks to me? And I'll leave the instructions up there for you. Go ahead and turn to your partner. Tell them the definition and which question resonated with you. Made you go, wow. So in one sentence, what is the definition of clarified input? To clarify the teachings of the multiple sources and to revisit them with lack of idioms and repeated instructions. That's pretty good. What do you guys think? Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, so you change the word clarify and the definition of clarify. Okay. <laughs> so how would you do it? Uh, but, uh, <laughs> the big thing that I saw was uh, 
the breaking down of complex language, and then the rest. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Simplifying. Yeah. Simplifying. <coughs> yeah. Making things comprehensible by using simpler English, or at least explaining the academic words that we use with simple English. Or at least help them make it better for the individual. Yeah. After reading the reflective questions, was there a question that really resonated with you and made you go, wow? Um, I think we both agree on the diversity of skills are responsible for each reported skill. Oh, good one. Because that happened to me, did it? I didn't want to do it. My young right. adult got it, uh -huh. but my young adult did it. I think that should have covered a lot of bases. <laughs> uh, do they remember what their question was or could they do that in the yeah, mm -hmm. that's, yeah. And do they know the instructions for whatever activity you're asking them to do? I like to keep instructions posted like I did for you. And I like to give them in a numbered list because kids have an easier time going back to a numbered list and finding their place than if there's a paragraph of instructions up there because they get lost sometimes in a paragraph. Or they'll start to do one of the things in the paragraph and when they look back up, they accidentally skip a line and they miss something, and so they don't do everything they're supposed to do. So that's how I like to put the instructions up there. As I um, yes. talked to you about last time. Okay, so now let's look at the activities within Clarify Input. Um, there are three strategy categories. We're going to look at one of the uh, activities within supported lesson delivery. You can get to it about five different ways. You can just click on clarify input and then there will be an activities button and you click on activities and all the activities will pop up. You can search for five and two. Has everybody been able to find it? Everybody click on five and two. And you'll see all the instructions for five and two You'll see um, quick tips, things to watch out for, um, evidence of success. And I've kind of written a Reader's Digest condensed version of that whole page on this handout, the one that says 5 and 2. Now, in sign up, we call 5 and 2 chunk and chew. Have you ever heard of chunk and chew before? It's on the back. It's on the back. Okay, what does the five stand for and what does the two stand for in five and two? Five minutes of that, two minutes of that. Yeah, two minutes of a processing activity. We've already practiced a couple of processing activities that are ideas for ways that you could get them to use those two minutes. But what I'd like you to do now is look at the handout that says five and two, chunk and chew at the top. And we're going to jigsaw it out in triads. So I'd like you three to be a triad, and one of you will read lesson prep, Chauncey, teacher does, and then you'll read student does, and then you will share what you read for triad. Would you join these guys to be a triad? Um, you'll read lesson prep, teacher prep, and what the student does, and then after you finish reading it, share it out with your, with your triad.
Okay, so how many of you are using 5 and 2 in your classroom? You're already using 10 and 2. You're chunking your instruction into little pieces and then giving students a practice and activity. Yeah. Not doing that, yeah, just maybe not the 5 to 2 model. Okay. Maybe more like um, yeah. you. I think we can all agree that some concepts take a little longer than 5 minutes to teach sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and if the concept takes longer than 5 minutes, let's say it takes ten minutes, then how much chewing time do we need to give them? More than two. Yeah. They'll need more than two. Because the bigger the chunk, the harder it is to chew on. And so they need that time to process it. What else is happening when they're doing that chewing? They're processing it another way. Mm -hmm. And they're getting a different perspective from their from their partner or their team or their triad. What else? Overall perspective. The practicing language. Yeah. Practicing language. They're getting an overall perspective. They're getting an evaluation of their ideas. Mm -hmm. To try to mm -hmm. change more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They really have to own their thought, don't they, to share it with someone else. And so maybe they're thinking for the first time. You know, maybe if they didn't do that processing activity, they wouldn't think about it very much. Okay, flip that paper over and look on the back. I have a question just on the back. Sure. Is this prepare, summarizing, graphic organizer? Does that mean give them the summary or have their No, a graphic okay. organizer that they can fill in. Okay, gotcha. And that's Make just sure. that's just optional depending on the lesson. It wouldn't be for every single lesson. Good question. I thought that was a little confusing too. Okay. So everybody look at the instructions up here for this page. On the back, I've got a lot of teaching techniques that you can use for the processing activities. We've already practiced blackout, can you guess? Turn and talks, we did wows with our question that resonated with us. We did a triad jigsaw, and I've tried to, I've been trying to chunk and chew my instruction to mod it for you, what it would look like in the classroom, and I've already found something else I need to chunk and chew better. Um, but I'm gonna chase the next period, but isn't that the way it always is? Like seventh period, you're like rocking and rolling. Um, so let's look at these instructions. Skim through the list of processing ideas on the chunk and chew teaching techniques for ELL handout. Put a check by the techniques you already use. Put an asterisk by a new technique you would like to try. And then share the asterisk technique and why you chose it with your original partner. I'll leave the instructions up there for you to use.
Okay. Um, what did you put an asterisk by? I'd love to know. What would you like to try? Can you guess? That one is so great for social studies. Yeah. I love it for social studies. Mm -hmm. What did everybody pick? Can you guess? Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I did too. Really? <laughs> yeah, like okay. yeah, and blackout's a really good one too. Um, okay, so let's all try. Can you guess next week yeah. and report back on Friday? Let me know how it went since you all picked that one. That's awesome. Well, you can use it as a warm up. Because it could almost be kind of almost an anticipation guide. Yeah. yeah. And then I like to show it again after the lesson mm -hmm. and have them do it again. Uh -huh. and, and they also just feel really good about themselves. Like, I had no idea what the answers are. Now I know. Um, so next Friday, I'm going to ask you, how's it been going? I would love to hear how can your guests have worked for you in your classroom. The last thing we need to do before we go is look at the teaching techniques we used today. Um, I've been chunking and chewing, or you can call it five and two. We did blackout, turn and talk, can you guess? Wow, it was jigsaw reading. Um, you self-assessed and prioritized using this list. You checked the ones you already did. You asked us the ones you want to try that were a priority for you. We're now going to write an extra ticket on that sticky note I gave you using a sentence frame. And in the interest of time, you do not have to copy the sentence frame. Just write down what will go in the blank. One new thing I learned today is blank. And don't write... Can you guess? Because we've already told each other we're going to try that one. I want to know something else. I already know that. And then one question or problem I still have for Sue is blank. And that's your exit ticket for today. Yeah, we got yeah, 10 minutes left. Your people can catch you up. Okay, we've got some time to go. Can you tell us what you learned today? Luckily, Cord, I printed them to the copier. Oh, 
Oh, I guess. Okay. Yeah, well. This is why we can't have nice things. We've already done the station. I'm doing the extension. They're in the triangle. So, you know, Nancy's going to have her first period, and they're going out level starting Tuesday on the station. But on Wednesday, our second period should be in the Something. Yeah, you came in on the end of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how we get it.